What people forget is that it's really easy to see the, the resort of Whistler and forget that there's this huge community behind it because they see the village, they see the nightlife, they come and the shopping and the skiing, but yet the community is absolutely the same. I mean, you have the little league and the hockey teams and the girl guides. This community behind it is very, very similar to almost every community around. Whistler is known to most people as a tourist destination with world-class skiing in the winter and activities and festivals throughout the summer. We've got activities outside here with just, you know, the base area with climbing walls and little zip lines and uh, there's lots of things to keep people going here. So it's, it's a busy summer resort. The 10,000 people who live year-round in the resort municipality of Whistler are generally physically active and feel a strong connection with their natural environment. By the year 2000, due to its popularity as a year-round resort and increasing investment in recreational properties, Whistler was facing tremendous growth pressures. Many active citizens sought ways to constructively engage a diverse group of stakeholders in order to manage development pressures. The municipality of Whistler had made significant progress in setting out a direction of sustainability with a new vision and environmental strategy, and the municipality was looking for a clear way of communicating these new priorities with the community. A coincidental visit of Dr. Carl Henrik Robert, the founder of The Natural Step, on a ski visit with his sons led to an invitation to give a community presentation. Many citizens were engaged by the presentation and saw the sustainability framework of The Natural Step as a common language which would catalyze diverse stakeholders with a coherent approach going forward. He was on a snowboard vacation with his sons and somebody said, hey, you know, uh, we think uh, the town of Worcester might be interested in The Natural Step. We were. We were fascinated by the idea that there would be a common language which um, is non-prescriptive, it represents a call to action. We did not have a common framework, a way of gluing all our intentions, the different groups, together under a common umbrella. What struck us, you know, about Dr. Robert's presentation at that point in time was how engaged, you know, the representatives at the table were. And you saw from the business community quite a bit of excitement about um, the opportunity. One of the things that we were dealing with at the time was how could we engage the local businesses. So this is a very, very timely visit. For us, it was a natural to engage with this and immediately reach out to the business community, Tourism Whistler and so on. And that became the group of early adopters. Recognizing the opportunity, the municipality joined with key stakeholders from business and the NGO community to form a group called the Early Adopters. And together they learned about sustainability and the Natural Step framework. The leadership challenge for these early adopters was to find ways to engage the broader community. The idea of having the uh, early adopters was to not get too far ahead of ourselves. We, we had done some work, um, there was some excitement about in the community, but again, you can get ahead and fail, and often it's harder to recover from a failure than it is to just move slowly. So the idea was, why don't we take a small group, let them prototype it, let them determine how it would affect various aspects. So to have Tourism Whistler, the mountains, a small business operator, the municipality, the environmental group come in and champion and do a lot of the work. If they could come to consensus, you had champions on all sides. At that time, at the local environmental group, we were facing over 100 local issues that had some environmental impact. It was very easy for us to uh, join uh, with the uh, resort municipality of Whistler in the, uh, uh, I guess, around about 2000, um, because we had, we had that consciousness already embedded in our hotel operation, and uh, we had a lot of the very simple practices in place. We had an environmental management strategy in place. When we heard the natural step concepts uh, presented by Dr. Robert, and that we saw the community engaging in this. It seemed that there was a lot of fit with what we were already doing. There was really no conflict with, you know, the sense of direction that we were already embarked upon. And we were there for, not to make my business better, but for the good of the resort and for the good of the, the whole. One, training ourselves, and two, launching it into the community at some point when we thought we were ready. And so while we were 
training ourselves in the early adopters group, we were also planning a launch into the community. When we first got together for, I think, a, a three-day toolkit jam um, around the Natural Step Framework, it was a really amazing opportunity um, for us to figure out uh, ways and stories and other methods to engage people and bring them into the Natural Step story and to give them ideas on how they can, um, you know, apply these values in their life. Having the opportunity to create something um, as a resource for the community was a really exciting first step along the journey. Uh, more specific projects that came out of some of the work at Fairmont and out of the early adopter process um, related to, to both materials and waste and, and energy. One of the neat ones for materials and waste, one of the initial ones actually, was, was a composting program um, that was run by worms. We actually hired an environmental coordinator to uh, further you know, carry our work in this area. So we started to make some commitments and take some action. We relamped our entire facility. It was almost a half a million dollar project, um, but we've done that. The payback on that was less than two years. They know it, they live it. Um, you definitely saw people within each organization that just stepped up to the plate and integrated it into their personal lives and into um, their careers. There was a, a large scale, a widespread endorsement of the natural step system conditions and in fact it became sort of the overarching set of principles within ever, everything else has been framed. The momentum builds in Whistler as the community adopts a common language, serving as an umbrella for various initiatives and approaches to sustainability. Community leadership comes from all levels and sectors. Each of the early adopter organizations and many other become partners in Whistler's 2020, a community plan for long-term success, including affordable housing, energy, water, education, and recreation. Whistler 2020 has won the Federation of Canadian Municipalities National Award for sustainable community planning, and more recently, the Livable Communities, or otherwise known as LiveCom Award, for best long-range planning, a United Nations endorsed award. A plan uh, like our Whistler 2020 plan, which is a comprehensive sustainability plan, is a framework that enables us to make little decisions and big decisions. Having <clears throat> all of our municipal managers and all our municipal employees and their businesses in town considering the, the system conditions, uh, what we've set up as our objectives in our Whistler 2020 plan when they're making any decisions. Following the Natural Step Framework, the kind of the backcasting approach to develop strategies that had a description of success, which was really sort of looking at these are our sustainability principles in this strategy area, what does that mean? So what does success look like in 2020? And we also, for each strategy, came up with a current reality. So sort of relative to where we want to go, where are we today? A very key thing that people will remember are the five priorities within the community. And that's kind of the high-level framework and all of that moving towards sustainability as defined by the Natural Step Sustainability Principles. And that's kind of the the, the what, so where do we want to go, the vision piece, and then the how are the 16 strategies. So we looked at what are the key focus areas or sort of the key issue areas within the community that we need to develop sort of strategies and plans around in order to achieve this vision of success and sustainability for Whistler. And we pulled together task forces for each um, strategy. And, and of community members, so all together about 140 people. You now have our, our Whistler 2020 task forces, which are made up of, yes, RMOW staff representatives, but now you have community members on those task forces. So if you're asking, say, about materials and solid waste, you now have experts in the community saying these are, these are priority actions uh, for not only the RMOW, but our partner organizations. So maybe Whistler Black Home, or maybe AWARE, or maybe the, the Bear Smart Society uh, around materials and solid waste. So the community giving direction to these big organizations and saying, like, these are the important things that we need to work on.